Hello! Today I'm taking a slight detour from my usual video game discourses in that I'm not actually going to be discussing a video game. Today I'm taking a more literary turn and looking at a 2003 novel called Lucky Wonder Boy. Now, a book review may seem like unfamiliar territory for this sort of channel where I generally do just talk about video games, but rest assured this title does sit firmly in the remit of a video game narrative and I think it's an instance of the rise of the video game novel. That's not to say that Lucky Wonder Boy is the first novel ever to deal with the, the subject matter of video games. Uh, in fact, the first instance I can find of that is a 1992 book called Only You Can Save Mankind by the late Terry Pratchett, which deals with a protagonist who kind of plays video games as a form of escapism. Now, Lucky Wonder Boy is much in the same vein, but it considers video games from a very high art and cultural perspective that only You Can Save Mankind does not. So I think it's a very interesting subject and kind of segues into my discourses in that it's, it's an example of where someone else, albeit through a fictional means, through a fictional protagonist, has considered video games as an artistic medium. Interestingly, the author of Lucky Wonder Boy, which makes it even more of a curio, uh, the author may seem familiar to many because it's D.B. Wise who is the showrunner or one of the two showrunners for Game of Thrones which in itself makes this novel even more strange because it's a far cry from the sheen and polish of an HBO production and it's more like a kind of cryptic postmodern abstraction that was conceived in some stoned haze of a college dorm room. So it makes it even more of this kind of curio and when I picked it up I kind of really kind of value it as it is a first novel uh, by D.B. Wise and it's it's so odd. Uh, I've, I've never read anything that quite sits in in this sort of format and, and considers this sort of uh, subject matter. On that note, video game novels are inevitably becoming a part of the literary mainstream, particularly in pop culture um, and we have publications, I think most famously probably now, is the slick MMO inspired uh, Ready Player One by Ernest Klein and you know this this was hugely popular and I believe actually the novels the, sorry the, the novel the movie adaptation of that novel is coming out this year or early next year and I think it's a Spielberg movie so it shows the magnitude that video game novels are kind of now considered to have had but where Ready Player One sits in this very slick Da Vinci Code style adventure narrative that is somewhat I won't say naive, but you know, it's it's kind of written in that that pop culture young adult sort of format. Uh, Lucky Wonder Boy is much more of a Douglas Copeland, Dave Foster Wallace sort of Generation X angst-ridden sort of po po postmodern novel, um, and that's why it appeals to me. And I think it it looks at video games from a much kind of a top-down mature sort of view and considers really how it does sit in, in the remit of our culture. Also, which isn't usually considered in, you know, it's not considered in uh, Ready Player One or Armada, which is Klein's other novel, or Only You Can Save Mankind, but Wise actually looks at the, not only the culture and the consumption of video games, but also the, the business of video games as well, the business end of video games and how it's not one of the key issues for the protagonist is how video games is for many a kind of labor of love many indie developers it's a labor of love and for the people that consume video games it's a labor of love you know the existence of this channel that i'm on right now you know uh one of the issues the protagonist has and what he finds out from actually getting into the the industry is that video games is very much a well-oiled machine and he was there at the turning point from where the AAA games started getting quite Hollywood. Um, so there's a lot of considerations around that as well which is really really quite interesting particularly uh, written by someone like Wise who did end up going into you know HBO and you know working on something of the magnitude of Game of Thrones. Now I've recommended this book to quite a few people that I know that are into video games and when they ask me what it's like I summarise it as Catcher in the Rye for the Mario generation and that's because through the protagonist of Adam Pennyman who is basically Generation X's answer to Holden Caulfield uh, 
the themes of existential crisis and trying to reclaim or preserve aspects of innocence and one's youth through the nostalgia of childhood video games is explored. It's one of the primary threads that kind of sees us propelled through through the narrative of this story. And I imagine this feeling, or at least the video games that are mentioned in this novel, will strike a chord with anyone that's in their late 20s, early 30s, you know, to mid-late 30s, I suppose, that grew up with games through the latter 80s into the 1990s. And interestingly, Adam Pennyman, as part of the core narrative arc, decides to start documenting a history of video games, which he titles The Catalogue of Obsolete Entertainments. And each chapter is kind of skillfully alternates between Pennyman's story and his actual life events and excerpts from this catalogue that he writes. And he writes these kind of excellently done uh, pseudo-academic arguments about the construction, the psychology, and the allegorical implications of video games and early titles such as Pac-Man and Frogger and things like that. Uh, and it's, it's really well done and it shows that D.B. Wise must know his video games to have, to have been able to write that articulately about video games. And just an interesting side note, uh, the essays of this fictional character actually inspired me in part to start this YouTube channel because I'd always felt that video games are an art form and can be elevated to that sort of standard. But it was only in reading this novel kind of years ago that I actually thought, yeah, you know, I could do something like that for for the medium of today. So yeah, and I think, you know, the fact that video games, you know, although this is a novel and it's a piece of fiction and, you know, despite all of that, I think the fact that Wise wrote about this in 2003, he was writing pseudo-academic arguments for the sta status of video games as an art in 2003. It's worth noting that in 2012, the Museum of Modern Art in uh, America actually started adding video games to their collections. And, you know, this was going on, you know, back in 2003, academics were still arguing about whether video games led to real-world violence, you know, in the wake of the Columbine shootings and, you know, the release of Grand Theft Auto 3 and things like that. D.B. Wise was actually writing from a very mature standpoint that preempted a lot of the later considerations, the cultural considerations, uh, that led video games to be put into a gallery space. So I think it shows a degree of foresight on the part of D.B. Wise, even though he probably wasn't seriously considering that, you know, at the time. So alongside this cataloguing of retro video games and looking at them through the lens of artistic criticism, a secondary theme is a strong anti-authoritarian sentiment which is weaved into the plot and again echoes the rebelliousness of Catcher in the Rye and I think it's a strong argument for why this is quite similar to the... Adam Pennyman is quite similar to this Holden Caulfield character. Um... But rather than being set in, oh god, I can't remember when Catcher's set, is it 50s? 60s? I can't even remember. I read it when I was a teenager. But uh, rather than being set when, whenever Catcher was set, it, this, this novel is set in a contemporary setting, concerned with the cultural significance of video games and the changing means of their production. Our protagonist notes the stark contrast between this singular geeky perseverance that early video game developers had and you know again who the, these these days we term as indie I suppose developers versus the movie kind of the movie style big AAA publisher that he, he actually ends up working for and he quickly finds that the people he works for don't respect the artistic value or status of video games but rather they're just con concerned with the financial return with them as commodities and frequent frustration is aimed at his employers, who he feels don't make games as a labour of love, but rather for a firmly capitalist agenda. And this is a sentiment which is felt to some degree by his co-workers, who he sort of hangs out with and flirts with, but not nearly to the same extent as the un increasingly unravelling, you know, mentally unravelling character of Adam Pennyman. Also, uh, tied in to the story is the this sort of ill-fated romance. Um, there's two instances where Wise utilises love interests in this novel. The first one is to show how Adam Pennyman's game obsession is actually 
destructive and it's dry it drives away his seemingly perfect eastern european girlfriend and then i think the final romance actually is the potential salvation for him uh, which is a much more positive and you know it's a geeky girl so it's it's kind of much more of a positive spin on it um the first is done rather convincingly and just to uh throw back to ernest klein where ernest klein writes this kind of almost super optimistic so so i i've read armada recently and i think it is supposed to be a young adult novel but i found it quite two dimensional where the main protagonist is obsessed with video games his best friends are obsessed with video games his mum is obsessed with video games uh the girl the romance that he interacts with she's this super hot tattooed girl that is obsessed with video games and you know i think klein is just writing this really formulaic you can't suspend your disbelief for it whereas penny um db wise on the other hand in lucky wonder boy has shown a sort of a reality where not everybody's into video games and video games can be considered a distraction as much as they can be considered you know a positive entertainment and so i just i just think that the 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 first romance with the eastern european girl i can't remember her name but i think it's is really kind of accurate to a point and it shows how pennyman's insu- ins- insular nature and obsession with retaining this aspect of innocence and youth has taken him out of the real world in a, in quite a negative sense but then how at the end you know we're not sure what happens he starts starts leveling out and and the second girl sort of levels him out a bit more and brings him back to reality a bit more and anchors him while still making you know the geeky aspects of his personality permissible so that's just a quick kind of comparison and why klein i think is a bit i don't know again i don't i'm not sure i'm the target audience for for ernest klein anyway so it's fine um so yeah, but actually just on a note and one of the most disturbing sequences of this novel is after the breakup of his first relationship we find Adam Pennyman playing video games and to try and reach some sort of breakthrough like mental epiphany almost for what for the for the video games in his raison d'etre his existence he he starts kind of masturbating while playing a video game and it goes into great detail about how he's having trouble controlling the video game with his feet because he's busy you know touching himself with his hands and it's really quite bizarre um and one of the most strangest pieces of fiction i've ever read actually um but it does well to kind of epitomize the hysteria that you know the peak hysteria that Pe- uh, pennyman reaches so to contrast that in fact um the the novel is really rough around the edges and it is a first novel and it has those kind of postmodern angst ridden vibes to it you know it seems like it's written by a college student in some places but you know aside from these scenes of hysteria in pennyman there are also some really beautifully written segments uh, one in particular which pennyman uses to rationalize the word geek because he he sort of i think he sat on a bus and he's going to a, a convention and he's considering the world the word geek and you know the his, the, the cultural kind of placement of himself uh and he says a geek is a person he he comes to the conclusion that and the statement is the statement starts a geek is a person male or female with an abiding obsessive self-effacing even self-destroying love for something besides status and i just felt that was a really beautiful sentence because a geek doesn't necessarily have to be about video games or anime or comic books or you know the sort of star wars you know the conventional idea of a geek a geek is someone that is just value something above money and career status and the, the things that you generally kind of the milestones you're supposed to hit in your life that are conventionally supposed to make you feel valuable in a in a kind of capitalist free market society so I'm going to kind of wrap up here. I don't want to give any spoilers in case anyone does want to go away and and read the book. The Lucky Wonder Boy title in case you were wondering is actually about a fictional video game and for his catalog of obsolete ent- entertainments, he manages to track down all of these old games like Pac-Man and those via emulators. However, Lucky Wonder Boy is a Japanese title that completely eludes him 
and it's his mission to kind of find the the elusive title so he can write about it and I think as well he he kind of relates back to his childhood and says he never managed to get past level two or level three and it's about his desire also to to kind of find the game and also complete the game once and for all which is you know it's, it's quite a cool adventure storyline taken in in quite a realistic sort of setting so all in all I would totally recommend this book to anyone that's into postmodern fiction or and indeed video games I think it sways more on the side of people that are into video games but also like reading um, because I've seen some reviews of it on Goodreads and people that are just general readers don't quite grasp it and they only look at it as as a first novel as a rough around the edges stab at, at postmodern fiction however if you're into video games you will emote a lot more with the protagonist and you will really kind of enjoy I think a lot of the reviews that he writes about or the essays that he writes about these old video games so if there are any negatives regarding this novel it would be again you know as I've stated a few times that it has a first novel feel about it it's quite rough around the edges um, and it has quite a rocky abrupt ending which would have put David Foster Wallace's Broom of the System to shame but I personally quite like this rough sincerity um, and as I said you know DB wise you can definitely tell that he is into his video games and he knows his video games just by reading it um, so finally I think it would be really good to see more novels like this as I don't know any others that have attempted to kind of look at video games in such a, a high art sort of way and really attempt to elevate and celebrate and to a large extent as well I think validate video games and the generation that was brought up playing them uh, I'm sure it will happen in due course as even when going to the movies these days you know I'm seeing more trailers for video games instead of other movies and I don't think the novel is going to die anytime soon so I'm sure we're going to see a lot more novels of this of this nature uh, cropping up in the future hopefully